Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei. I'm sorry that I haven't been very good with keeping up to date on the uh, the update schedule, but um, not gonna lie, going through some really personal, heavy emotional shit right now and uh, making videos is kind of a really low priority for me right now. There's some stuff I really need to take care of in my life. Um, but uh, yeah, that shit's depressing, but um, don't worry about it, I don't want to talk too much about it, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to give up on this, even if uh, I'm a little slow with uh, uploading videos. Please be patient, I am certain that this Let's Play will be finished. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, enough about that depressing shit, just want to point out the fact that this man has the same theme as our dog, Pascal. So they're probably the same being. Anyways, this part of the game is really fucking annoying, uh, because you have to wait for all of your money to slowly dwindle down to zero. And I could have sped this up in the, uh, in the video editing, but fuck you. Uh, you're gonna suffer along with me. Fuck you too, Pascal. No one loves you. Alright, so now we're gonna take a few steps here, trigger a little bit of a cutscene. So, this cutscene is also kind of annoying. Because uh, every single time that you're on the world map, and the uh, moon cycle that you can notice in the upper left, uh, every single time that that will reach a full moon, this cutscene will trigger, and Kazuya will take a little bit of damage. Not too much, it's more of a minor annoyance if anything. It'll slowly glow away, uh, glow away. It'll slowly go away as the plot progresses, but for now, it's just a little bit of an annoyance. If anything, I am glad that after the apocalypse struck, the one thing that's okay in this post-apocalyptic wasteland is the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy is the one constant in our lives that we all need. So, uh, yeah, since this cutscene's long, um, I just want to say that you may think that the world of Shin Megami Tensei is a disaster, but I want to talk about another disaster, and that is the recent Fantastic Four movie that just came out, which I watched a cam rip of that I found online. Holy shit, that was just awful. Like, I don't even like the Fantastic Four, and I had my expectations low, and I was still disappointed. Like, damn, that is just an awful movie. I'm kind of surprised that in 2015 a movie that bad can come out. Uh, fuck, it was just bad. Sorry, I needed to vent about that. Don't even, like, straight up, don't even watch that movie. Like, it's not even so bad that it's funny or good or anything. It's just bad. It's just boring. Anyways, important plot shit is happening now, so I should shut the fuck up about the Fantastic Four. Um, yeah, gasp, a time skip. I, uh, actually, one minor gripe I have with this game is, um... I think they could have done a little bit more with the uh, the whole time skip element to it than they actually do. It's just kind of an element of the world that they bring up a few times, but uh, don't really, uh, I guess, explore too much. But uh, I guess it makes sense because they wanted to show off the uh, the world after a great cataclysm, a a like just after a nuclear apocalypse and you can't really do that like right after so you have to do a time skip of some sort to show that off but uh i don't know i think they could have done more with the actual time skip element of it like uh like just what has changed and so on since uh the characters were last um in tokyo but whatever it's not even really something i noticed on a first playthrough that's just kind of something i uh noticed after you know thinking about it now So in the last video, I said that I would explain in this one uh, what's going on with the gem thing. So this is Rag's jewelry shop, and uh, you can exchange your gems here for either items, which I will only be showing off, I think, once in this Let's Play. There's only really one use for it, and even then it's kind of not a very practical use. So item exchange is practically useless, actually. Um, element 
uh, element trade though is actually pretty useful. So uh, you can trade one gem for one item or you can trade three gems for an element. And we are actually going to be possibly using that uh, if we have the proper gems, if I stumble upon them. Uh, just so we can get a few uh, elements that we uh, will need for later. Um, might have noticed that I still have Eros and Earthies in my party. As I've said, I have a usage for them that uh, I will show off next video, actually. But um, elements are important. <laughs> I, I guess I'll say that uh, there's a... Elements are unique demons in that they have a very specific use in this game. So, yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll show that off when the time comes. Here's our current collection of gems. Uh, not too many as you can see. We'll find some more in due time though. Uh, more dungeons will have them as uh, treasure chest items. And uh, sure enough, more enemies on the world map here will actually drop some of the uh, more common gems like Sapphire and uh, I think Amethyst. That one drops a lot too. So uh, Shinjuku hasn't really changed much, still the same layout. I'm glad to see that the Jehovah's Witness is still there, doing his or her job. Can't really tell if that's a guy or a girl, actually. But uh, gotta, give, uh, gotta give him credit, 30 years in the same career is uh, uh, something to admire, especially after the apocalypse. And here's the Satanist guy, who's, uh, doing his thing. This guy probably likes DMC Devil May Cry. And actually thinks 4chan is funny. You know those kids. Anyways, so uh, like every other traditional uh, JRPG, we are going to be wandering around town and just talking to NPCs for uh, for the sake of learning a little bit more about the world. Uh, got some nice setting details and world building going on here. Uh, sure enough, Shinjuku is uh, not how we left it, and uh, as you can see, it seems to uh, seems to have a little bit of an issue with um, whoever's running it, but. I do want to say that uh, this man right here is kind of an important NPC. You uh, you don't need to actually go and see this man, but uh, it's kind of helpful because he will let you uh, trade your old cash for a little bit of Maka, which uh, this time I sped up because I'm nice, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a nice little detail. I like how they added that in just because uh, it kind of uh, heals the wound a bit of losing all your fucking money. So, uh, the secret police talk like they're straight out of that super hot fire video, which I find fucking hilarious. But, uh, yeah, o Ozawa runs this place now, which is not great. Um, you can find a few NPCs that actually like Ozawa, because he does, to be fair, keep them safe from the demons, but the secret police are basically Nazis. <laughs> um, they, uh, they really are not nice people at all. Uh, you can tell that they bully around the common people, and they're, they won't think twice about killing one of them. So, uh, yeah, not, not great. Uh, even though this is a little bit of a safe haven, it's not actually all that safe, because the people running it and the people that are the guards are just assholes. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, good edge lords and we're gonna overthrow this establishment, but um, not gonna get to that yet this video. It also disturbs me that the uh, barman is what appears to be like a ten year old. That's kind of fucking weird. So uh, let's see if uh, Yuriko is back in. No, it's just an old man. Wonder what Yuriko's up to. Like. What if she, if she survived the apocalypse? I don't know what she's been doing for 30 years. Maybe she's working with Ozawa, who knows. Maybe we'll find out.
so we're gonna get the fuck out of here. Got enough of the uh, bars. Now uh, let's go instead to the disco just to see what's poppin', as the uh, as the hip young kids say. So actually, this is the first place in Shinjuku that you need to go for story reasons, not the bar. I'm just talking to the bartender just to see what's up, but um... If you recall the downstairs area of the disco, we actually need to go there and talk to someone before we can advance in the story. So, uh, according to this bartender, Ropa uh, Ropangi is just fucked. I'm glad to see that pot and, uh... Weed usage is still a societal issue in the post-apocalypse, but yeah, so um, Ropangi, which is an area we did not see in uh, in uh, the uh, pre-apocalyptic world, as I guess I can call it, uh, is apparently just super fucked over, so that's unfortunate. Maybe we'll uh, stop by there eventually just to see what the deal is with the Count and the Pot. Something about the way that that sprite is drawn of the policeman is just unsettling. I don't know if it's the pose or the weird-ass skinny hourglass figure thing. It's just unsettling and weird and creepy. Oh, that's unfortunate. So yeah, let's go down here. Actually, not not uh, not a lot going on here. All of these side rooms I explore are sadly empty. But thought I'd go in just because I couldn't remember if uh, anything cool was there or not. But nah. But we are going to go into this little, not this cavern, but going to go off to the side here, and right here, we need to talk to this guy. So... This NPC kind of bothers me, and it kind of bothers me that this NPC is important to plot progression, just because, like, he basically only tells you everything you already know from other NPCs in the town, but for some reason we need to talk to this specific one to advance, which I think is kind of dumb. Now that actually is a uh, important piece of uh, trivia, but uh, even then I think they could have incorporated it into just other random NPCs and not have to find the one specific guy so that we can progress in the story. That's just kind of... that's a gripe I have with a lot of games. Like, uh, I'm playing Final Fantasy 2 right now, and sometimes it's kind of weird because, uh, if I recall, there's a point where you need to talk to like three different people uh, in a sequence just to... Uh, find out where to go next and do stuff and I, I I hate when RPGs do that just let me let me find out and do it on my own don't lock it behind these weird conversation triggers that pisses me off now this seems like it would lead up to a boss fight but we just get the fuck out yeah that was kind of anticlimactic So we're gonna go up here, and we are going to see uh, see who's uh, who's running this place. Well, we know it's Ozawa, but um, gonna see what he has to say about this whole situation. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can stop what he's been up to. But uh, yeah, this area does have 
random encounters. So you can see a giant pile of zombies right there. I actually really like this demon design, I think it's pretty cool, but um, these things aren't too bad. If you have Hama on a demon, they're pretty uh, weak to that. Uh, they're weak to fire too. Uh, well, maybe not weak to fire, I don't quite recall, but um, usually undead things are... Uh, they don't like fire very well in RPGs, so... I might have been making that up, but I don't know. Fire seems to be decently effective. Not as effective as just straight up bullets though, it seems, so... Yeah, they're, uh, not too bad. They usually come in large groups, which is obnoxious, but... I'm just gonna auto this one out. There we go. As you can see, Yuji and Takashi still a little bit behind in experience, which is, uh, which is annoying, but we'll solve that eventually. So th once again, like the Yakuza guy that was there 30 years ago, what a fucking useless security guard. Also, here's a fucking dune-ass sandworm right in here. I just said dune-ass, which, uh, which sounds like a fictional country or something, I don't know. You know, I've had a copy of Dune on my shelf for, like, probably two and a half years now. I have never read Dune. Um, should really get around to that one of these days. Been reading the first Wheel of Time book on and off, because my uh, girlfriend told me to. And, uh, that's enjoyable. It's a very traditional high fantasy, but whatever. So, I uh, decided to show off this encounter. I don't know if we've seen a Citri before, but, um... Yeah, this was really dumb of me. Auto battle can be dangerous, as you can see. I really should have uh, stopped auto battling just so I could heal up, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not good. So, <laughs> Takashi is the sole survivor here, and I uh, tried running away. Luckily, I did get away. Um, but yeah, that was a very, very close almost game over situation right there so um that was my bad but once again pay attention don't be like me and just auto battle everything even though you can usually get away with it so i i, I uh, wanted to see if anything would happen if takashi was alone and talked to ozawa and actually no everyone needs to be alive for the scene to trigger um if you talk to ozawa before you talk to the man in the disco basement, he uh, he has a little bit of dialogue with the people, but like you just kind of get kicked out of the office. Sorry I couldn't record that, I just kind of forgot about it, and also to be honest it's not much and not really worth showing off, but... With our profound disco basement man knowledge, we can confront Ozawa for the monster he truly is. Takashi, after god knows how many episodes of this Let's Play, will finally get his revenge. I'm kind of proud of him. Not really, because he's not very smart, but... He's doing his thing. Oh. Never mind. Ouch. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's get the fuck out of Dodge. Takashi, that's the dumbest thing you've ever fucking said, and you've said a lot of dumb things. Even Yuji agrees.
That's the most anime fucking line that's come out of this game so far. So we're gonna go to the Heretic Mansion and, um, give Takashi his, uh, weird-ass revenge fantasy. Okay, Virgil. Guys, I think he's crazy. Yeah. So he's uh he's going to take it, it looks like it's a random selection. It's not. He uh is going to take your highest level chaos aligned demon and he's uh going to do his fusion. Takashi is going to combine with the Stingray to become Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Takashi. I actually like that design a lot. It's pretty neat. Well then, that happened. Let's uh, check out his stats, and um, he's uh, he's pretty powerful. Decent amount of levels ahead of us. Uh, you could probably tell just from like the maximum HP and stuff. Yeah, he uh, he is definitely up there in terms of stats. So right now, what you should technically do is go back to Ozawa. We're uh, we're not gonna fucking do that. We're going to fuck around now that we have a really powerful party member. So you can go south of Shinjuku. Uh, real close to Shibuya and go into this red little shrine area, very similar to the one in the park. And uh, we're gonna walk around here, stay very close to the entrance, come with demons, and we are going to fight some level 50, level 60-ish demons that are here. Because uh, now that we have Takshi, he's a very useful party member and we can uh, fight these things. And uh, use it as a way to grind and get some pretty easy experience. Maybe not easy. Um, after like every single random encounter here, you're really going to need to go back and heal up because... Uh... But uh, yeah, you're not going to come out of uh, these fights with everyone alive. And even if you do, um, everyone's going to be banged up to hell and back. So yeah. Uh... You're gonna get a shit ton of experience, though, from uh, these fights. Usually enough to level up, especially on the first one when your characters are lower, lower level. Um, so you will get the free heal just from leveling up, but your demons and such are uh, gonna need healing, so... Yeah, um, just kind of follow the strategy I'm doing here, like use Marin Karen to charm enemies, put them to sleep, even though nerve bullets tend to not work very effectively on them, it seems like, just because Kazuya is lower leveled. But yeah, Marin Karen has a really good success rate, use uh, whatever powerful magic attacks you have, buff and debuff if you have demons that do that thing at this point. You'll, uh, you'll uh, be able to take these down if you try hard enough. Anyways, um, 
I think I've said there's like three things in this game that just break it apart, and I consider this like 2.5. Like, look at how much fucking experience we got. Level up three times here. Put a point into an uh, intelligence just uh, for the sake of having one. Fucking Yuji gained five levels, Jesus Christ. Yeah. All, all Meg. Well then, there's that. Gonna go back up and heal, and I do want to show off some random encounters and whatnot that are just around on this area of the world map near Shinjuku. Just thought it'd be nice. So, uh, these Kelpies are really fucking obnoxious because they can bind your party members. Uh, probably the most dangerous random encounter at this point in the game. Uh, probably one of the most dangerous random encounters in general in this game. And also, when you're, uh, when you're bound, you take a bit of damage for every step you take on the world map, and it has that really fucking obnoxious white flash that makes traveling slow as hell. Uh, these, uh, cuckoo kachus um... <laughs> They, uh, they drop sapphires sometimes, so, uh, they're kind of useful for that. These, uh, Furies, uh, I think that's supposed to just be Furies, but I could be wrong. Uh, come in large numbers, and they're weak to bullets and, I think, force, so they're not too bad. They're kind of, kind of not really all that important, to be honest. Just showing it off for the sake of completionism. Alright, and then also we have some weird-ass robots that show up on this map, too. There's also, like, a little drone ball-looking thing that, uh, you can find that I don't think I show off in the video just because I didn't run into it while I was just running around. Uh, these are actually human enemies that you can recruit and use for human fusion. These, uh, zealots can be a little annoying to recruit, uh, just because they're very finicky in negotiation, unfortunately. But, um... Yeah, I showed off all the random encounters I wanted to, so uh, I think I'm going to go back to the Red Shrine and grind up a little bit, and that means it's time for a training montage!